to show you the first project I worked on with the Connect for Windows using the depth camera to solve a problem I had. I have a projector in my room and as everyone who's ever walked in front of one knows, they can actually be pretty blinding. Connect, projector to computer. I'll go over how to send all the voice commands and everything with uh, infrared in the next video. So as you can see now, the computer screen is actually getting blasted onto me and I can barely stand here without covering my eyes. So the setup that's actually going on here is I'm taking my laptop camera and on the second screen is actually the projector. So over here on the right side of your screen is actually the upper left corner of the images getting projected at me. So the problem I have here is one of occlusion, which is the same thing you deal with in graphics all the time. Uh, when there's an object behind another in graphics, you don't want to show the parts of the back object that are being blocked by the one in front. That's not how real life works. So with this projector, I have the same thing. I don't want to project the parts of the screen where I am, where I'm blocking the screen because you know they won't show anything on the actual screen itself and they're just blinding me here. So in order to solve that problem, I'm using the Connect. I'll show you how that works now. Connect, occlusion mode. So now that that's running, you see the diagnostic stuff over on the right here, I can stand in front of it without actually getting blinded. So what happens is when I walked away and started the program with the command, the Connect takes a picture with its depth camera and then stores that as a reference frame. So that first image is one of just purely all the space in front of me. It now has a record of how far away the wall is from the Connect. So 30 times a second when it's updating that depth image, it then says, oh hey, I've got infrared bouncing off of this object, which is me, and coming back, and I'm getting a depth value that's less than the wall, because I am closer to the connect than the wall in the reference frame was. Now it needs to say, oh, that pixel, I don't want to show that part of the screen. So what the code does is it paints a black pixel onto this white screen, wherever I am in it. Figuring out where I am in it is a little more complicated challenge. That's what the black rectangles over here show. It's the same idea as what you're seeing on the left side of your screen with the color. So my laptop camera, the field of view is actually bigger than the projector screen in that field of view. I need that to be a one-to-one. -one. So what I'm basically doing is this black outer rectangle, that represents the entire field of view of the connect that's sitting on top of the projector. What I need to do is, by, in order to find a one-to-one, -one, I need to find the part of the uh, connect field of view where the actual projector screen is. So the four sliders below the uh, rectangles, those allow me to basically resize that inner black rectangle and move it around so that it perfectly matches the screen behind me. So as you can see, when I move here off to the very edge of the screen, I'm now, you know, well within the entire connect field of view, but I'm just on the line for that inner black rectangle. And that's the part where I wanna begin drawing the black pixels. Because if I'm over here, I'm still being seen by the connect, but I don't wanna do anything to the actual screen yet. Uh, that way it maps one to one. As you can see, it still needs some optimization work because the frame rate lag is a little much. So what it's doing every frame is basically scanning through that inner black rectangle and any pixel that comes up closer to the connect in the reference frame, that's the ones that it starts to paint. Uh, because I was already then painting the screen, I decided to have a little fun. So what you see here is I've got a color mode. So this will you know, slowly oscillate through a rainbow just for fun. And then if you want to be a little more intense, this will actually just start strobing. This is a little much epilepsy warning. Um, so that's it for this. Uh, I actually coded this just basically off of the tutorials that the Connect for Windows guys and the developers all put out. There's some fantastic resources, uh, very helpful and easy to get started. So links to all that below. If you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to post. I'll put up all the source code once I comment through it all, but this stuff is all very closely connected, so it's going to take me a little while to get through that. Uh, yeah, thanks. Have a good one.